Well, welcome back, Caymans. Mr. Eicher here with a third part of the lesson on 5.5. We had three pages here. Lots of different types of operations you can do with radicals. Um, the first part of this, we're going to do a little review from a 5.4 lesson, simplifying uh, radical expressions. And then the um, second part, we'll rationalize the denominator, which I believe you've done before, but we'll practice, see a couple new types of situations. Um, so we read, when simplifying radicals with variable, with a variable in the radicand, you should rewrite the term so that the exponents are divisible by the index. The variable with its leftover exponent stays in the radicand. And then remember, you need absolute value bars for any variable where the index is even and the original exponent is even and the resulting exponent is odd. So this is what we call the even, even, odd. It's a helpful phrase to remember. You need to know what goes to what, but even, even, odd to help us determine when absolute value bars are needed. So let's check out this first one, do a little review. So first we look at what's the index. The index is the number written out in front. And if there is no number written out in front, then it's understood mathematically to be a two. It's a square root. And now we need to write each uh, term or each part of this monomial so that their exponents are divisible by two. So we need 32. 32 is, let's see, 16 times two. And 16 is four and four. So I could write 32 as four squared times two. That would be 16 times two, which is 32. Now I have an exponent that is uh, divisible by two, by the index. Uh, x cubed, I could write x cubed as x squared times x to the first. That would be the same as x cubed. And again, I have an exponent that is divisible by two. Um, the x to the first though, this is gonna be left under the radical because its exponent is not divisible by two. And I can't really change it to be divisible by two. Uh, and then y to the sixth, we can write y to the sixth as uh, y to the third squared. And now it has an exponent that's divisible by two. So when we simplify this, let's see what's gonna stay under the radical. The two is gonna stay under the radical and the x to the first is gonna stay under the radical. So we could start with that. We have a two and an x under the radical. Now all those squares that I've highlighted in green, those are gonna simplify. The square root of four squared is four. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of y cubed squared is y cubed. Um, now it's very tempting to move on. A lot of students just kind of move on from here. You give yourself a pat on the back for making it that far. Uh, but we have to ask, do we need absolute value bars? Uh, we need absolute value bars because of the issue of getting undefined answers and imaginary roots, basically. So to determine that, there are three questions we ask. First, is the index, oh, let me say it this way, do we have an even index? Uh, yes, we do. The index is two. We said that up here, it's a square root. So yes, we have an even index. Do we have any uh, parts, any variables with even exponents on them under the radical? Well, in the original question, I always look at the original, not once you started breaking it down, but in the original, we had a y to the sixth. So yes, we did have one that was y to the sixth. And for that one, for that y to the sixth, once you simplified it, did you get an odd exponent when you simplified that y to the sixth? And uh, we would say, yes, we got y to the third. So if you say yes to all those questions, 
then the y to the third needs absolute value bars. So I'm gonna put that in blue just so you can kind of see it set off a little bit better. So I put the y to the third in absolute value bars. The x inside and the x outside, neither of those x's need absolute value bars. It's only the y to the third that needs absolute value bars. Um, so our answer would be this right here, 4x times the absolute value of y cubed times the square root of 2x. Let's now look at the next one, number 21. For 21, we look at our index first. Our index is four. And we'd like to write each of these parts so that their exponents are divisible by four. Now, there's another way that uh, you've probably seen that you can kind of uh, divide like nine divided by four, 16 divided by four, six divided by four, and try to figure it out. And that's great. But for this video, I'm going to write out uh, a little bit more work. So I need 32. I need something four factors of 32. So it looks like we can write 32 as uh, two to the fourth times two to the first. That would be two to the fifth, which is 32. So again, I'm looking for exponents. I want the exponent to be divisible by the index of four. Uh, x to the ninth, if I wrote it as x to the eighth times x to the first, then that eight would have an exponent that's divisible by four. And then y to the 16th, y to the 16th, that's already divisible by four, but you could think of it as y to the fourth raised to the fourth. So now it has an exponent that's divisible by four. And then z to the sixth, we could write as z to the fourth times z squared. And now that has an exponent that's divisible by four. So let's look at what's going to stay under the radical. What doesn't have an exponent that's divisible by the index four? We have this one, this one, and this one. So that's going to stay under the radical. So we'll write it like that. The two stays under, the x stays under, and the z squared stays under. And then what comes out? Well, we have a fourth root of two to the fourth. The fourth root of two to the fourth is two. And then the fourth root of uh, x to the eighth would be x squared. So eight divided by four is two. And then the fourth root of y to the fourth to the fourth is y to the fourth. And the fourth root of z is z. And don't forget to include your little index in there. Um, so that was quite a lot there to process. There's lots of things we addressed. But we still have to address, do we need absolute value? So do we have an even index? Uh, yes, it was a 4. Uh, do we have any exponents that are even under the radical? So in this original, we had a y to the 16th and we had a z to the 6th. So yes, we had two of them. So those are our two possibilities. Do either one of those, once you simplify, do you get an odd exponent? Well, the y was a 4, so not that one. And then the z was a 1, so the z to the 1 was an odd exponent. So that tells us we need an absolute, a pair of absolute value bars around just the z to the first, but not the y to the fourth. So I'll use, uh, I'll use blue up here just so you can see that set apart. Let me get rid of those little check marks so you don't get confused by what those things are. Uh, there you go. So our answer is that right there with absolute value bars included. Uh, and then number 22 will be a practice problem for you on Schoology. OK, moving on, our last topic in this rather long section, rationalizing the denominator. So to rationalize the denominator, let's actually look at one like 24 first. To rationalize the denominator, 
uh, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by whatever that denominator is, square root of 10. Uh, the reason why we do that is when we multiply, now we have the square root of 100, which is just 10 in the denominator. No more radical. So no radical in the denominator. No rad. And the numerator, square root of 5 times square root of 10, is the square root of 50. Um, so that's pretty good, but square root of 50 can be simplified. Square root of 50 is 25 times 2. So this would be 5 root 2 over 10, which simplifies to be root 2 over 2. Um, so that's the answer we would have. That's the process right here of rationalizing the denominator. Rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by whatever square root is in the uh, bottom, in the denominator. Um, now there's an, a, a different approach we could have used for this one. Uh, we could have simplified first. There's a quotient property. We could write that as 5 over 10 and then simplify. So we'd have 1 over 2, square root of 1 over 2. Uh, and then if you simplify that, you would get the same answer of square root 2 over 2. So a couple different ways that you could approach that. Let's look at the previous one, this number 23. Uh, we have a square root of c to the fourth d to the seventh over a square root of 128. Uh, now it might be a good idea to try to simplify square root of 128 first before we multiply and rationalize the denominator. That would be uh, 64 times 2 is 128. So we could do the square root of 64 and times the square root of 2. So how about we write that 64 is 8 and then root 2. So the square root of 128 we could write as 8 root 2. And now when we go to rationalize the denominator, we don't have to multiply by such a big number, which is kind of nice. So we can multiply the top and the bottom just by square root 2. We only need the radical part. We don't need the whole 8 root 2 part. So that would give us uh, 2 c to the 4th, d to the 7th in the numerator. And then we would have an 8 times square root 4, square root 4 is 2, so 16 in the denominator. Um, that's pretty close. I mean, now the denominator is rationalized. The only other issue is that we can simplify these exponents. So c to the 4th, that would be uh, c squared on the outside, d to the 7th. We can divide 7 by 2, and that would be a 3. Remainder 1. And when we say the remainder 1, that means there is a leftover uh, d to the first remaining in the radical. So we'd have a d cubed on the outside, and we'd have a 2d, a remainder right there, 2d on the inside, and then 16. Uh, we don't need absolute value bars here. We had an even index of 2 at the start, and we did have a c to the fourth that's even, but it ended as an even c squared. So that's even, even, even. We don't need absolute value bars. So it looks like this was our final answer. So that's rationalizing. Let's look at one more, and then you'll have number 26 on Schoology, but let's look at one more, number 25. Uh, number 25, note that the index is a 3. Look at that index. So um, the issue is here, we need to multiply. To be able to rationalize the denominator, we need to multiply the top and bottom, not just by the cubed root of 5, uh, because that's not going to give us a, a perfect cube. Actually, what we need to do is we're going to multiply not just by the cubed root of 5 in the top and bottom. That's close, but notice what we would get in the bottom. We would get like 
the cubed root of 25. And uh, I don't know what the cubed root of 25 is. We actually need a third, or I guess a second, depending how you count. We need another factor of the cubed root of five. Um, that's because if we multiply by an extra one, what we get is five times five times five. So now we get five to the third, which now we can do a cubed root of five to the third. So our answer would be, I'll just show you a middle step here. This would be the cubed root of 125. And then in the top, we'd have the cubed root of five times five, which is 25. So we would get the denominator would be five and the numerator would be the cubed root of 25, which we can't simplify at all. So that would be our final answer. So anytime your index isn't a two, you have to do a little bit of extra thinking to figure out uh, how many extra factors do I need to multiply by to get there. All right, number 26 is all for you. Thanks for watching this video. It gives me a, gives, give me a thumbs up if you actually made it this far through the video. I appreciate your time and your attention. Let us know if you have any questions. Have a great day.